Hello everybody, my name is Jared and today we are going to be doing another sketchbook tour. This sketchbook tour is my most recent one, it is from 2019, it is from all of 2019, and I'll get straight into it with showing you what this sketchbook is about. A lot of it has been developing D&D characters, so um, my characters that are actually in my comic, which I have posted a um, speed paint of the first page of this comic, but I have also done some actual breakdowns of some of these pages as well and some of this development on my page, so if you want to have a look, that will be linked in the video. Now on the first page here, this is Shrike, and Shrike is one of the characters that are going to be an antagonist for quite a bit of the comic, and as you can see here, he's based on the actual bird, the Shrike, and he's also based just on Plague Doctors, that kind of aesthetic. He is a druid, and that's pretty much all I can tell you about him until it gets to the actual reveal of him in the comics. Um, he went through a few iterations, he looks definitely way 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 too young here, um, but yeah, we'll just move on to the next page. The next page is a page of development for the main character, Briar. There are three main characters, but she's kind of like the main main character, and she is a half-elf, she is 16 and very petite and has big, big bushy red hair. She's eventually going to be a ranger, but at the moment she is a little bit without any means to defend herself. She's very sweet and very naive and very excited about the world. And again, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about her at the moment. All of these are done with pen, ink, biro and watercolor. So yeah, a lot of people ask what I've actually drawn most of these ones in, but these are just watercolor. This next page is of Veris. Veris is another character who comes into it a little bit later. He's not one of the main characters, but he is in the main group. Um, he is an undead. This is the first development of him. He looks completely different now. But yeah, this is just getting a basic idea of what he's going to look like, like items of clothing, um, experimented with different colours and stuff for his colour theming. But as I said, he changes a lot, so I probably wouldn't spend too much time on this page. This next page is some post studies from Movement by Hosier. Um, again, I literally was just trying to get some ideas of moving poses and hands and where people's bodies go when they're moving and dancing and things like that. So yeah, that's basically all that was. I am trying to like loosen up my artwork. That's a big theme for this entire literally entire sketchbook. Um, I still haven't got there really, I'm working on it still, but hopefully maybe one day I will be loosey-goosey with all of my artwork. And there's also some studies of um, a cinema that I went to, as well as just like some random character doodles. This next page is featuring some characters from some different projects. We've got on this first page Dolly. Uh, Dolly is a character from How to Kill a Predator, which is a comic I've featured a few characters from in different sketchbook tours. I believe it was in the previous one. Um, this comic is a thriller, it's kind of a little bit violent, it's got a very very cutesy art style. But yeah, it's, it's quite a weird one, but I hope you guys will enjoy it. It's a lot shorter than the D&D comic, so I will be probably working on that one in the background. Um, that one and Jumper are kind of like side projects, whereas the D&D one is kind of my main comic project. But yeah, um, Dolly is a very fun character. Um, they all have quite intense shape language in that project, so um, they are based on a heart. And on the other page here we have Nathaniel, he is one of the other main three of the D&D comic. He is the older brother of Briar, and he is a paladin. And yeah, he is a very soft baby, but he doesn't look it. He's um, a bit of a coward. Otherwise, not a lot to say about him. Again, you're going to have to read the comic to get a lot of details on what these characters are like. And that is the third character who makes up the main three. This is Bator. Bator is a tiefling. He is a bard and he is cheeky and very anarchistic. He um, one of the big design bases for him was, um, personality-wise, Snufkin from The Moomins, which probably tells you everything you need to know about his personality. But yeah, he's very fun. And this was just figuring out what his colour scheming and stuff was, which did change. We didn't like the purple, so he does change to being a blue tiefling. And 
we do change quite a lot of his outfit designs. He changes outfits probably the most of all of the characters in the main plot, but um, yeah, there's quite a lot of different variations of Beethoven, and he does change a lot when we actually develop his um, parent character later on in the sketchbook. And the other page is a very, very early design for a character called Haven, who also features in that comic. He is nothing like this design, so I won't focus on it very much. I, I was just throwing down ideas, and yeah, none of them work out. He is an Asimar, so when he gets to be on the actual sketchbook, I will let you know so you can see the comparison detail, but yeah, completely different than he is here. And on this page, I've got a lot of different things. I've got a self-portrait in that top left corner. Um, that's just a drawing of me in one of my outfits. Um, I was really, really enjoying my regular choice bag and shoes, so I drew myself in those outfits. The proportions of it are really weird. My proportions were really strange at the beginning of this sketchbook. It does improve, but I still need to work on it. I think I just need to do more anatomical studies. But yeah, this is just like a little self-portrait of me, and you can kind of see my little um, Disney ID. There's also some sketches for a idea of doing the uh, Meet the Artist tag. I never got around to doing that. I did do a sort of version of it on TikTok, but um, yeah, I would like to properly do it one day, but at the moment I'm kind of like not feeling my um, aesthetic. So I'm probably gonna like work on that and then I will do the Meet the Artist tag. And there's a little Shinso's in the bottom there and a Hawks next to him. Yeah, not a lot to say really about this one. Here again, developing D&D character pages, so we've got um, a very early design of Aloy, which is the orc girl down in that left bottom corner, and then more Briar, some pose sketches, um, little ones of, again, figuring out Aloy's proportions and stuff, some Rotomel, because you can see the little bunny character coming out there. He was really difficult to design because it has like um, a mix of a rabbit and a human anatomy. And because he's, he's a rabbit folk, it's kind of a um, homebrew character design. But yeah, so he was quite difficult to design, so I was like tweaking him a fair bit in this one. And then there's more briars on the opposite page. Again, just sort of figuring out her proportions, trying to figure out outfits for her as well as just like drawing little scenes, tiny little thumbnail scenes so I can see how her and Nathaniel look together and stuff like that. Yeah, just basically fine tuning what she's gonna look like in the comic. She doesn't actually change a lot. She was quite easy to find her design, but everybody else kind of changes quite a fair bit. Nathaniel doesn't change too much either actually. And here is a much more up-to-date version of Verus. His hair changes a fair, a fair bit but this is pretty close to what he actually ends up looking like in the comic. He's a rogue, he's an undead, um, he has quite an intense backstory, but again that will be revealed in the comic. His nose is a very important part of his design, um, he's got a very 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 straight nose. It's just like straight and then kind of hooks down over, but that's kind of one of the defining features of his face, so I have to get that right every time I draw it. And the opposite page, again, it's look, just little doodles, just drawing some like vintagey characters, a little bit of Shrike up at that top corner, and in the middle it's just me trying to figure out how to draw um, Klaus from a series of unfortunate events. Um, I think I kind of got it, I, I still think it doesn't really look like the actor, but I'm working on it. Now there's some rude artwork on this page, hence it's censored, we're not going to acknowledge that. Um, those are some doodles for commissions that I ended up working on. But um, I've got more designs of Shrike on this page, so he's there with his little uh, shadow mask thing. <laughs> Don't worry, neither of those are spoilers. There's some Rodamel down at that bottom, you can see like developing what his little bunny eyes are going to look like. There's a Hawks up at the top, there's, there's a Baby Shrike, which is the top right of the left page. That's him with some roses behind him. That does make sense if you know a little bit more about his character, but at the moment it will not be a spoiler. And I really like that piece, I might actually draw that in digital art at some point, because it's really cute and it's very expressive to tell you about his character a little bit more. 
And the opposite page, again, there's just more like ideas of what Haven's supposed to look like. He completely changes. That's the left bottom of the right page. Um, more doodling. There's some Hawks and Dabby in the corner there. And again, Hawks and Dabby on the opposite corner as well. And a sword design that's for Veris. And yeah, and then another Hawks up at that top. I'm trying to figure out how I wanted to draw his hair and his face and stuff. And in case it wasn't obvious, I doodle eyes quite a lot, so if there's a filler bit, there's probably just eyes doodled somewhere. Um, there's another Shrike, and there's sort of me sketching it out in Biro and then a watercolour version of it. I actually still like the Biro version better. Um, there's a window that's looking out on some, like, greenery and stuff. Um, then there was a little painting that I did, which gave me a better idea of how I wanted to draw Haven. This actual piece is what gave me the inspiration for what Haven ended up looking like. So as you can see, I developed that on the next page and that is very similar to how Haven ends up looking in the actual comic. Um, so with our ASMR, we decided to base them on gems. So they are all based on different rare gems. So here's his Lapis Lazuli. So his skin tone is blue, his hair is very dark blue and he has little gold flecks and feathers and his eyes are gold. So yeah, that's kind of where Haven's character started to develop from. Um, his outfit is based on kind of a more relaxed Japanese-y kind of style. It's meant to be very, very, very neutral because of the group he grew up with. And again, that's a tiny bit of a spoiler, but you'll get to know more about him and stuff when the comic's actually released. Haven does come into it quite late though, just so everybody's aware. Then there's some doodling characters that are based on fairy tales, so Snow White, Rapunzel, and Sleeping Beauty. And that's them as chibis, and then you move down and that's them not as chibis, as like proper versions. But I don't really do anything with that concept. I might do one day, but they're just there. If you hear my cat, by the way, I'm very sorry. <laughs> He's just a little bit shouty. There's a doodle of Varys' mum. She changes a lot. But there she is, um, that's just like a basic idea of what she might look like. Um, the dress doesn't change too, too much I don't think, but her look changes completely. And then I was just studying a hair, and then I did some studies of different levels of anthropomorphized limbs, mainly to try and figure out how anthropomorphized Rodomel's legs were going to be, because that is quite a difficult part of a human to change. And then above that you can see my development for Rodamel, and that is pretty much what he looks like in the comic. So that's his proper design now. <laughs> you can hear my cat now, he is purring on the desk. I've got another cute girl, a couple of cute girls, um, some Shinso and Deku, and then in the middle it's just some more doodles of Aloy and that is what she ends up mostly looking like actually that's she doesn't change too much from this point as you can see we're finally getting some proper designs and that Shrike is pretty much the proper design of Shrike as well there is also a tiny Aloy and Briar in that bottom corner there because they will be shown next to each other quite a lot <laughs> um, there's a study here of Kelly Eden she's a youtuber and a model she's very pretty um, some more Rotomel his legs are very off here, but we're just going to ignore that. Some more Shrike down at the bottom there. And some comic book thumbnailing. And then the opposite page, I'm doing some background studies for the D&D comic. So we've got um, some so we've got some pretty rockery and some pretty house, some pretty castle even. <laughs> um, lots and lots of vines and leaves and studies and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I'm pretty happy with them. Then we've got some thumbnails for the comic and that page that I'm thumbnailing there at that bottom bit is actually already up on here. So if you want to see it as a speed paint, it is there for you if you want to look at it. And there's some Briar and Nathaniel just for reference since both of those feature in that scene. Now I'm further developing that comic page and working on different comic pages later. And um, that one at the top is just based on a melee song. Um, yeah, just some little character designs and a little study. Um, on the opposite page, we've got some Aloy and Briar, a little baby Haven, and then a full-size Haven. 
and then some like tree study designs because I spilt some ink so no I spilt some watercolour and um, watercolours that I got that was actually the time I got my big set of watercolours ah good times I love that thing I literally use it all the time now and that is a study at the top there for mostly what the castle in the comic first I think it's the fifth page yeah I think it's the fifth page there's a comic panel which is just like you can see the castle and that is the study of what it ended up looking like it's a little bit different but um yeah I had to simplify it quite a lot because obviously this is done in watercolor and that's a digital illustration that's mostly cell shaded and then I've got some Pacific Rim versions of Hawks, Bakugo, Dabby and Shoto and there's an Airy on the opposite page and a uh, Baytor you can see Baytor in his blue form there and another different outfit that's him with one of his other many in musical instruments Baytor and Haven and that other colour in illustration is Elishan, who is a villain for the comics, so a bit of an antagonist, and he will come into it quite a lot later. And I have also some speed painty like stuff on my TikTok of all of the D&D characters, if you want to see them in a little bit more detail. Yeah, my TikTok's a great place to follow if you are interested in just sort of like seeing my day-to-day -day art progress and stuff because I don't really post on here as much as I do on TikTok and Instagram. Right, on this page I've got a study of drawing one of the cats from my fiance's old work and um, then there's just some more like character designs, Briar in a different outfit, um, Nathaniel but he doesn't really look right there so I wouldn't really focus on that one too much. There's a Haven, I like that one a lot. Um, a Baytor on the opposite side, again this is pretty much what Baytor looks like now. He has some minor hair changes later on. There's also some colour comps for the comic pages. I don't use those too much honestly but um, yeah that's just there. And another tiny briar and that kind of thing. Just little doodles. There's a Haven. Um, we've got some more havens at the top there, like baby ones. Got a Shinso, a sort of more uh, Japanese style Kai doodle, um, some Kai, Dabby and Hawks, and then another little haven at the bottom. And I was playing with the colours for Baytor again, so there's like a rainbow of Baytors. Um, I'm very, <laughs> I love seeing this page, it's just really cute seeing all these different coloured Baytors. But um, he does end up staying that kind of like dark blue colour. And a little haven at the bottom. I did put that haven at the bottom just purely for colour reference because I didn't want to make the blue of Baytor too similar to the blue for haven. I quite like grey Baytor though, that's quite cute. And um, there's a outfit redraw, so I redrew a old drawing of mine which is a lingerie piece. So that's the one with the girl with the X over her face. There's a haven at the bottom again, the one with the um, got like black all over his hands, a Nathaniel, um, some doodling of an old character which is the one in the big sweater, and then on the opposite page we've got a briar, I'm really happy with that briar, that is pretty much how I want her to look, and then a Beetle, and again that's pretty much how he should be looking, he looks really cute there, and the shoulder to waist ratio is about right for <laughs> how the art style is supposed to look. He's kind of the pretty boy of the comic. And then I got into Sabrina, so you can quite see I've done a little like, drawings of Sabrina and Sabrina and Nick. Another Nick there. Um, those are all in the centre there. Um, then I was drawing a Genderbend Kai just below that Sabrina and Nick piece. Um, just drawing another OC. Um, there's quite a few havens. Um, some lantern studies, as in the floating lanterns from Tangled. Yeah, I was just studying those. Um, a self-portrait of me in the middle on the left page. And then some little biro doodles. They're not very interesting, honestly. And then I've got a really, really cute um, outfit design there. I really like that girl with the pink hair. It's really cute. I want to do something with that little outfit at some point. Um, a briar that I just taped in, that was from a watercolour sketchbook that I actually hated the paper for so I stopped using it. 
Really, it just did not work out. It just pulled up really easily and it just really irritated me. But that briar was okay, so I stuck her in. And then we've got a briar with short hair at the bottom. That doesn't actually happen in the comic, so don't think of that as a spoiler. I just sort of doodled it. Um, more eyes. Another couple of hawks ears. I'm trying to figure out what the top part of his outfit was. But turns out I was completely wrong. It's an entire bodysuit. <clears throat> Here I'm also sketching out some tiny little thumbnails of tarot cards because I wanted tarot cards based on a couple of the characters in D&D because one of my characters is going to hold them in a watercolour piece and that makes sense in the comic that character has a relevance to tarot cards and fortune telling but I needed those designs to be done so they could be featured in the other picture so that's what those tiny little thumbnails are so on this page I've got again there's a little bit of censoring because boobs exist and YouTube doesn't like that. So I've got more detailed thumbnails of those tarot cards I was telling you about and those are just scattered all over the page. There's also just some Briar, um, some Haven, some <laughs> drawings of my characters with no hair because I wanted to look at their faces a bit more and their faces change a little bit after this just structurally purely because some of them look a little bit too similar. And then on the opposite page I've got some drawing of one of my cats, and a drawing of a D&D character I'm currently playing, who is the gold coloured one at the bottom there, and that is Sanctuary, he is actually Haven's father, um, and yeah, he's one of the characters in our current campaign we're currently playing, he is a cleric, and he's also an Asimar obviously, but yeah, he is based on the Tiger's Eye gem, he speaks with a southern drawl, which is always fun. So on this page we've got another sanctuary as you can see there at that bottom bit. So in the centre here we've got um, some development for a big digital piece that I did. Um, this features all of the D&D characters except for Haven and Elishan and Shrike. So it's all of the main cast really, so like the really tight main group. I do stick a finished version of it in the sketchbook, but yeah this is pretty much how it is in its sketch form, and then I've got some lingerie designs in the background, lots of those um, censored any inappropriate nipples, <laughs> and um, yeah, otherwise they're very very cute. Um, I like doodling lingerie and um, harnesses and things. And then I've got a briar there as well as development for her watercolour piece, which is also finished. But yeah, I'm particularly proud of that sanctuary, he looks very cute. Then me playing with gouache and obviously painting hawks because I love hawks. Um, it turned out really badly because I'm not very good with um, gouache. I will try and work on it in the future. I literally only did like one gouache painting in this entire thing and then gave up. Got some lingerie stuff there as well. Um, that's pretty cute. And then another heathen. And on the opposite page I've got some hawks and a gender bend version of Dabby. Got some lingerie, some shigaraki, not in lingerie, that would be weird. And then I've also got some redraws, so that's another cute lingerie design that I redraw. And that's a study from Rule of Rose, this video game up at the top left. Rule of Rose is a very good video game, you should definitely, definitely play it. I've got a little doodle of that girl with the pink hair. And some character design developing for a little like side project thing, but um. That is currently only, like, just characters I doodle. The girls in the school uniforms. In my TikTok, I do post a fair bit of those. It is a um, woman-loving woman project of an all-girls school which is haunted. It's got supernatural goings-on. And the main character runs a radio show where she basically investigates this kind of thing. Um, there's a haven there, some lighting studies, a rose painting, and then a kind of creepier rose doodle in bio underneath. And there's a picture of Adam. You saw him quite a bit in the previous sketchbook, I believe, but he's one of the characters from Jumper. He is an amputee. He's very, very cute, and he is also a low-key a hoarder, but <laughs> he's, he's going to work on that. There's my cat, my cat. It's desperate to be on camera. Um, then there's some doodles of the D&D characters again. So we've got Sanctuary, 
Sanctuary's little team. Um, that's Eliza and Jack. Jack is the one in the middle, she's the tiefling, and Eliza is the redhead. As you can see, we are basically d and ding as all as our like parent versions of our D&D characters. So they are very funny. We're calling them like the um, sexy parents squad. Um, then there's also some like chibi hawks, a little Varys, um, a study of my house, just like a doodle down there, and then some thumbnailing. Um, some sanctuary oodles, a gender bend shoto magical girl, because that's the kind of shit I like to draw. If I can draw girls and I can draw magical girls, I will do it. Then another cutesy girl, some briar and some havens at the bottom there. So there I'm doing a study for a watercolor portrait of Rodamel that I do. That one is really really cool, I'm really really pleased with how that one came out. Um, but yeah, it's kind of more like a colour comp. And then, again, this page is just kind of doodly, lots of haven and stuff like that, and um, there's a Draco Malfoy on the opposite page, my favourite Harry Potter character. And then we've got Adam, Alex, and Leah from the comic Jumper. As well as you can see some tiny doodles of Melanie Martinez. This is around the time I believe I started my Melanie Martinez project, which is where I drew every single outfit from K12. And I have done that on TikTok if you want to see it. Um, this is a, a point where I was starting to get art block, so I was really, really struggling to draw. You can tell by how little detail this page has compared to all the other ones. But yeah, I was just really struggling with the slog of trying to get this one done, and I was feeling like I was just kind of done with the sketchbook at this point. But I, I get back into it a little bit. So yeah, there's a couple of pieces that I am pleased with on this one. There's the Kai pieces are quite good, I'm quite happy with those. They're not as detailed as I'd like, but I'm also very happy with the little clown girl in the middle. She was a speed paint on TikTok that did quite well, so if you guys want to see that, again, head over to my TikTok. I feel like I'm only advertising that, but my TikTok has been where most of my art is. Um, there's a piece based on Call Me By Your Name. It's a um, gay film and book. Very, very good. Um, very, 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 very sad though, so like, you know, bear that in mind, but me and my partner really enjoy it, so we watched that film and then I did that little art piece about it, and then there's Havens and some Briars, and you'll notice that I'm sticking a couple of Polaroids in at the moment. I'm just sticking in memories from things that we've been doing, like some things from Disneyland. And there's some Fenris just studying his face, as well as then I'm doing some actual studies of people. Um, I'm studying a couple of models, Markiplier, <laughs> actors, that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I really like how these ones came out. It's fun doing studies, like especially when I'm actually doing like detailed um, studies with shading and things, because I don't do that enough, and I really should, because it really improves your artwork. Here's some deconstructing Fenris's outfit, because I am planning to cosplay him at some point. Um, not much to say here, this will be featured in my how to cosplay video as well. Um, lots of Polaroids, a magical girl that's based on a Ouija board that I drew in that middle bit on the left there, thumbnailing a comic, that's a very old comic thumbnail, um, a bus ticket, no a train ticket sorry, redraws, this is my fashion victim redraw, it's I think from 2015-16, um, and so there's the little one that I drew back in 2016, and then on the left, those pi pictures are all drawn um, in 2019, so those are fun to do, as well as the thing at the top, that's also a redraw, so on the left is my most recent one, on the right is the old version. Um, more working from reference, I'm really trying to fight that um, art block I'm struggling with, so I'm doing a lot of reference studies and redraws, so I've stuck into the Melanie Martinez artworks, that I did, so that's Wheels on the Bus and Classify, they're the first two. Um, drawing from a doll picture that I found. Um, there's the w watercolor f of Varys down at the bottom, the little, a little thumbnail version of the finished one. Redraws of another lingerie piece, that one's The Road. So yeah, that one's very block colory and had a very androgynous haircut, so I was pretty pleased with The Road one. 
Um, there's at the bottom just like a girl doodle I did on digital. Um, there's the principal from K12. Thumbnails again, these are really old thumbnails for an animation project. I did start the animation project, it's just not done yet. Um, building doodle. Um, a street doodle. I think that's from an art book. I want to say the Rapunzel Tangled art book. And then we've got some redraws again for House of Wolves, I think that one, this one's called. And there's another one, I feel like this one's called Break the Rules of the redraws, so that's like the big poofy hair and things like that. And then these three on the left page that are like all cramped together, the right part of the left page, these are all from a very old project, which is about robots. Um, so they're Nate, I think Zach, Zachary or Zach, and then Tina. And then above that is a quite blown out picture but it's actually a um, digital piece I did based on it from Stephen King so it's based on the second film but yeah that film hit me hard it was sad really really sad and then on the other page again I'm just drawing from reference or I'm doodling um did some fetish wear fetish wear on hawks this time some sanctuary um eyes just all my comfort zone stuff really because I was again really struggling with getting inspiration to draw. I do like those furniture designs though, they're quite cool. Um, redraws again, this is floating on, and um, then I've got some more of the K-12 pieces, um, show and tell and nurse's office. Um, yeah, drawing old characters again. This is a full set of thumbnails for a very short comic. Um, it is based on a zombie apocalypse, but um, it's just set around two people who live together during that time. Um, yeah, it's very sad and very gory, but I will probably release it as a zine at some point, but it will probably be 18 plus, because, yeah, it, it's quite violent. <laughs> Next one is an even shorter zine, but this one is about two people in the mafia. Um, yeah, again, really, really, really short, but it's very cute, and I was very pleased with it. This is quite an old zine sketch, sketch I feel like 2017? maybe 18. And then on the other page I've got some tattoo designs as well as redraws and lingerie designs and things like that. So yeah, these are really cute. Um, so we've got Rapunzel based paintings, so I've got uh, two old ones on the left page and on the right page up in the top right corner, those are old. And the one in between those two is my most recent one. I am really proud of this one, this redraw is really cute. Um, then I've got a few more of the K-12 things, some sketching out an animation design, some pattern doodles, and then a redraw of, I think it was called Heartbreaker. Comic thumbnails again. This is actually, I think, an animation. Yeah, this is an animation from Mail. Um, a very old one, very, very, very old, maybe 2015, 13. Um, two more of my K-12 pictures. Holic School Sweetheart and Recess, and then there's the finished version of that group picture I was telling you about. That's just up in the top corner on the right. Finished version of the Beto watercolor, that's just a small printed out version um, of that there. And then doodling more of my girl with the skirt with the um, carousel in it. Again, that's just a redraw of a 2014 drawing, so a really old one. And again, another one down at the bottom, which is a circus outfit. His media constructing hawks for my cosplay, um, just figuring out what I'm going to do with him, how it's going to look. I don't want to go into this one too too much just purely because um, I will be doing a more detailed explanation of what I'm doing here in my how to cosplay part 4 video which is going to be coming out um, hopefully next month. Um, that one is going to cover this page completely and explain how to deconstruct a costume. So on this one, we've got some Briar, this is her watercolour portrait, and then the one with Nathaniel, which is the one with the tarot cards, that's just there. I didn't actually like how this one turned out, I will probably redo it one day. And then two more clown characters, as well, a clown character and another circus character. Some maze designs and some town designs, house layout designs. Oh yeah, and then an another one of my um, K-12 ones. This one's detention. And then finally, this one's kind of boring. This is literally just really, really, really old comic doodles, which is 2013? Yeah, it says 2013. A really, really, really old comic that I wanted to kind of immortalize and keep 
so that's just got stuck in the back here and at some point I might revisit it, I might not, but um, this one project was nicknamed Saviour. And that is the end of my sketchbook. This is my 2019 sketchbook, so it does have feature some of 2020, but I am hoping to at least finish one sketchbook per year now, because I do do really detailed sketchbooks, as you can see. So my newest sketchbook, there will be a tool for when, when it's done. I have only sort of been working on it a little bit, so it's not anywhere near done yet. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and you will consider looking at my other art videos, or my other sketchbook tours, Thank you so much for watching, and as always, please remember to be creepy.